Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to solve a puzzle that was sent to me by one of my subscribers named Harold Nolte, who wanted to know how I would solve the puzzle using only the methods that I teach. Harold has his own YouTube channel and he has some good Sudoku methods and ideas, so you may want to check out some of his videos, especially if you are a pencil and paper solver. Apparently, one of Harold's subscribers sent this puzzle to him, and the subscriber got the puzzle from another video called Cracking the Cryptic, and it was listed as diabolical. It says the puzzle first appeared in the London Daily Telegraph on September 22nd, 2017, and it took the guy in that video over 30 minutes to solve it. The video itself is only 15 minutes long, but he admits he paused it twice while he was stuck, and then he sped up the final 20 or so easy moves. Harold solved it in about 20 minutes in his video, but he started the tape after he had already solved 21 cells. He solved the puzzle using only pencil and paper and without candidate lists. He did a lot of it in his head and used what he called a trial and error or what if method, which is similar to what I would call forcing chains. I put the links to Harold's video and the original Cracking the Cryptic video below so you can make your own comparisons and judgments. But today, by using logic and of course automated candidate lists and filters and starting right from the beginning, let's see how quickly we can solve it without any forcing chains but rather with just a few of the basic techniques I have been teaching, and then you can decide which method is best for you. The first time through, I'm going to try to solve it as fast as I can without being frantic, and I'll time it on a stopwatch. I wish I could put the timer on the screen, but it would disappear as soon as I click on the puzzle. So you're just going to have to trust me, and then I'll go through it a second time with you more slowly and explain each move. Okay? How does that sound? All right, so here's the puzzle. The tape is rolling. This puzzle has 24 givens, and as I mentioned earlier, it was listed as diabolical. So let's just cycle through the candidates one by one and take it step by step and see what happens. Okay, I'm starting the clock now. All right, let's put in the candidates and uh, go to candidate one. There's a single on candidate one. All right, let's move to candidate two. We've got a triple in block two, so that's a nine, a seven, and an eight. Got that same triple, four, two, five, in column four, so that's a three. The same triple in block five, so that's a nine and a six. All right, let's move to candidate three. I don't see anything there. On candidate four, we have a triple in row six, four, two, five, so that's an eight and a seven. We've got a quad here, but we don't need it. We've got a naked pair in block four, so that's a six. That is neither four nor five. All right, in row two, we have a triple of four, five, and three, so that's a six. In row three, we have a triple of four, two, and five, so that's not a four or a five, not a four, two, five, not a four, not a four, or a five. Now we've got a triple of one, seven, three, if you can see it in that same row, so that's a six. And in column two, we've got four, two, five, so that's an eight. In row nine, we've got four, two, three, so that's an eight, and that's a six. And in row four, we've got a naked pair of four and five, so that's an eight. All right, let's uh, go to candidate five. And we've got locked candidates up here in block three, so that's not a five, that's not a five, that's not a five, and then locked candidates again both ways, that's not a five. All right, candidate six is all done. Candidate seven, there's nothing there. Candidate eight, there's a single. Candidate nine, a single. A single on one and a single. Okay, back to one. And we go through them again. This is a dead swordfish, nothing there. Two, we've got locked candidates in block six, so that's not a two. You've got a conjugate pair in row one and row nine, so there's a skyscraper, so that's not a two. Now we've got locked candidates, that's not a two, that is a two. Move to candidate three. There's locked candidates up here. These are not threes, and this is a three because you've got a naked pair and a single. Now candidate four, we've got a lot of cells with four or five in them, and we have a conjugate pair in row nine. So let's see if we can hook those up. Two, three, four, five. So these are not fours. 
that's not a five, there's a pair, that's not a five, that's not a four, so now we've got a bunch of singles to fill in. Okay, and that's a single up there, a single there, and now we've got a naked pair, four and two, so that's a seven, that's a single, single, and we've got a naked pair in row two and a naked pair in column two, so that's a five. And now we've got conjugate pairs on four, so we have one, two, three, so that is a skyscraper. So these are candidate twos, that's a four, that's a four and a two, this is a four and a two, there's a naked three, now I go to candidate five, that's a dead X-wing, there's no sixes, candidate seven, dead X-wing, so now we'll go to the bi-value cells, and it's all bi-value except for this one cell with three candidates, and there are three threes, and row three, and three threes, and block three, so that's a three, and the puzzle is solved. And we'll stop the clock. And that's three minutes and 35 seconds. So that was one take and one piece of film with no edits. I probably could have solved it a little bit faster if I didn't have to talk. But now let's restart the puzzle and I'll do it again, but this time I'll slow down and fully explain each move, okay? Here we go. All right, so here's the same puzzle from the starting point. And I may not solve it in exactly the same order as I just did a minute ago, but it should be pretty close. It will just depend on the order that I see things this time. All right, so let's put in the candidates. And let's start on candidate one, and we have a hidden single in row seven. Everybody see that? That's easy to see. And that leaves a dead jellyfish, which is four rows and four columns of candidates with no eliminations to be made. So there's nothing there. So let's move on to candidate two. And we have a naked triple in block two, 425, 425, and 425. And the best way to do that is to solve the nine and the seven first, and then you can just solve that solve for eight. Instead of eliminating the four, two, and the five one at a time, it's faster to do it that way. So now we have the same triple in column four, 425, 425, 425, so that's a three. And now we've got 425, 425, 425 in block five. So that's a nine and that's a six. Okay, everybody good on that? All right, let's move to candidate three. And there was nothing there. So candidate four, we had a triple in row six. So we have four, five, four, two, five, four, two, five. So that's an eight and that's a seven. Now we've got two, three, four, five. We've got a quad here in these cells in row five, but we don't need it because we've got a naked pair in block four. So four, five, four, five, that's gotta be a six. That's not a four or a five, and that is not a four or a five. Now up in row two, we have a triple of four, five, and three. So four, five, four, five, three, four, three, that's a six. And in row three, we have four, two, five, four, two, five, and four, two, five. So that can't be a four or a five. That's not a four or a five or a two. That's not a four, that's not a four or a five. Now we're left with another triple, one, seven, three. Look at the white squares, one, seven, three, one, seven, three, and seven, three. So this has to be a six, all right? Now in column two, we have another four, two, five triple. And so that means this cell has to be eight. And now we look down in row nine and we've got a triple of four, two, three, four, three, four, two, three, four, two. So that can't be four, two, three. So instead of wasting time eliminating those one at a time, that's just an eight and that's a six. Okay, now in row four, we've got a naked pair, four, five, four, five, so that must be an eight. And I think that's all there was for now, and let's go up to candidate five, and now we've got locked candidates up in row one and block three. Those are locked candidates pointing down here, so those cannot be fives, and now we've got pointing candidates and claiming candidates. That is not a five. All right, so now the sixes are all solved, so let's move to candidate seven, and there's nothing there. So candidate eight, we have a hidden single up there. Now candidate nine, we've got a hidden single there and a single on one and then another hidden single on nine. Now we go back to one and start all over again. Now that's a dead swordfish. That's a swordfish pattern and there are no eliminations to be made. So we move to candidate two. And now here's something that I didn't see before. There's a sashimi X-wing on two here in column two and in column six. Let me mark it. Okay, here is an X-wing, right? And then here are our two fins. So this is not a two. 
I didn't see that before, but we would have eliminated that too some other way. So let's get rid of those colors. And now on candidate two, we've got locked candidates here in block six, so that is not a two. And now we've got a skyscraper. Okay, so we've got, here's our base. And then we've got conjugate pairs in row one and row nine. So there's your two spires. So you've got strong, weak, strong. So any two that can see those two yellow twos will be false, and it's that one. So that is false. And now we've got locked candidates in block two pointing down here. So that is not a two, and which leaves a single here. That is a two. Okay, so let's move to candidate three. And we have some locked candidates up here in block one pointing down here. We also had locked candidates down here in row nine, but we didn't need them now. This is a naked three. It's also a naked pair, four, two, four, two. So that has to be a three. So now let's move to candidate four. And we've got a lot of conjugate pairs and a lot of bivalue cells with just four and five in them. So when you see that, you try your best to link them up somehow. And as it turns out, we have an X chain on candidate four. So we have strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. Now let's draw that chain. That's strong, weak, strong, weak, strong. So either the blue four in row five is true or the yellow four in row nine is true. So that means any four that can see both of those fours will be false and there are two of them. There's one here and one here. So those are both false. Okay, so let's get rid of the colors. Now we've got a naked pair on five and three. So that can't be a five and that can't be a five. And now we have a naked pair on four and two. So that can't be a four. Now we have a bunch of singles to fill in because those bivalue cells are all connected. So as soon as you solve one, they all get solved. All right, we've got a seven up here in row one and we've got a five here. We've got a three and a five. Now we've got a naked pair of four and two, four and two in block seven. So that is a seven. And we have a naked pair of four and two in column two and a naked pair of four and three in row two. So that is a five. And now we have another skyscraper. We have a foundation here. And then here are our two spires. So that means these two cells cannot be four. So they must both be two. All right. So now let's get rid of the colors. And we've got some naked singles, naked single, naked single naked single, naked single, and a naked single on three. So that's it for the fours. That's a dead swordfish. So let's move to candidate five. And then five, we've got that X-wing, seven, another X-wing. And then I noticed that we have a bug plus one. If you light up the bivalue cells, you will see that all the remaining cells are bivalue cells except this cell right here in row three, column eight, and it has three candidates. And I just finished my video on bug plus one the other day. It's video number 22. And so you know we have to perform what's called the test. And the test is to see if one of the candidates in the cell with three candidates appears three times in either the row, the column, or the block. And of course, candidate three does indeed appear three times. So that is going to be the solution to that cell. Candidate three appears three times in row three, and it appears three times in column eight, and it appears three times in block three. So that is the solution to that cell, and then that unlocks the whole puzzle, and the puzzle is solved. So there you go. That wasn't too bad, was it? I'm just a little surprised that this is called a diabolical puzzle because the techniques that we use weren't that complicated except for the two skyscrapers, the X chain, and the bug plus one. It was all just really basic stuff. Anyway, that's how I would solve it. So now you can decide which method is best for you. Some people like to do the puzzles by hand with pencil and paper, and if that's your cup of tea, that's fine. I just have to ask, would you rather solve a puzzle in three minutes or 30 minutes? It's up to you, I guess. We all have our own tastes. Okay, that's it for today, and remember, if there is anything you would like me to demonstrate or discuss in one of these random tips videos, please write to me and let me know, and I will do my best to accommodate your request. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, be well and be happy.